We are cracking on past the midway point now of our What If and Loki Build-A-Figure Marvel Legends wave where we're going to build a big old Watu the Watcher. But to get there, we're going toy by toy, package by package, review by review. Today, we get a pretty unusual one to look at. This is Zombie Hunter Spidey, continuing the tradition and my suspicion that if Marvel uh, Legends figures of Spider-Man can be named anything other than Spider-Man, specifically MCU <laughs> Spider-Man, uh, then Hasbro and Marvel will go that route. This is from What If Episode 5, What If Zombies, and the figure is called Zombie Hunter Spidey. Not Spider-Man, just like the Iron Spider, just like all the other little slight renames on the boxes. There's got to be something here that means that, like, Disney get to keep more money that way if they don't outright call him Spider-Man and Sony have a cut. I don't know. This is cool because from what I've heard online, this costume is based on the Avengers Campus theme park outfit. Uh, and provides a really cool alternative um, animated style MCU Spidey figure. Except for a couple of things that you may have already spotted that we are going to talk about in more detail when we get him open. However, of course, he's got Doctor Strange's cape of levitation, masked head, artwork on the side is of his Peter Parker likeness, which is sort of a... I feel like the likeness is sort of slightly aged up Tom Holland was the vibe that it gave me in the episode. Uh, and even more so, seeing it in hand, really. Um, there he's outside the Sanctum, it seems. Zombie Hunter Spidey. Zombie Hunter Spider-Man is in a ragtag group of survivors fighting his way through a zombie-infested world. Now he faces his greatest challenge, fighting his way out of this packaging and being harshly judged. So this is interesting. Uh, I'm going to point out the thing that's going to annoy some folks first before we get into the review, which is because it is based on Spidey in the episode of What If with the zombies, his shoes or, or like stockings or the feet of his costume, you can't quite see it in this light because it's very bright. But they are... <laughs> They're covered in blood. It's a little hard to tell in this light. There you go. They're covered in blood. His thigh is covered in blood. His chest is covered in blood. <laughs> Spidey is covered in blood. So, if you're a custom figure maker and you want a fun template animated Spidey, it's this one, but get ready to paint over him. So, blood-covered feet. Uh, the feet burn forward and backwards and have a lovely little pivot. He doesn't have a calf uh, articulation point, but he does have double joints in his knees. He has a swivel at the top of the thighs and a tight little ass uh, because he's got quite, um, quite a flexible crotch joint, actually, for leg movements, so you don't... You know, stuck moving in and out. You can sort of really position him a little bit. He has a waist swivel, which, you know, gives you the little overlap and reveals that the majority of the figure is actually red paint with the blue over the top. He has a decent ab crunch. Allows for quite a bit of flexibility. Uh, Spidey also has quite stiff but reliable shoulder pegs. He has upper arm articulation. Uh, he has double jointed elbows, which allow for quite a bit of flexibility. And he has a slight issue with the wrists. You see, his hands bend inwards and outwards, as you'd expect. So that's handy for Spidey, because of course Spidey shoots web. But with this costume, the web shooters are sculpted on. So if you want him to shoot web... Oh, God the web shooter stabs into the back of the hand and stops it from moving back very much. So you can't really go the whole hog. This costume is an interesting one because, uh, oh yeah, and finally the head is uh, on a separated joint and is actually really flimsy, so be careful. Uh, this costume is based off of the episode, but again, I think it's probably like a Sony rights issue. 
Um, because obviously Sony owned the cinematic rights to Spider-Man and his use in the MCU stuff is like a co-agreement with Disney Studios and Marvel Studios. This costume isn't based off of like... It, it's, it's based off of the one from Civil War and Homecoming, but it's not using that as its frame of reference. This costume is apparently the costume that you see in Avengers Campus at Disneyland's California Adventure. So this is the theme park variant of the MCU costume, complete with the chunky web shooters on the outside, because obviously when you're doing the character meet and greet costume, you sort of want to be like, oh, that's his web shooters. Look at them. There they are outside the costume. Um, the darker lines where they are for definition, the wider red on the arms, the spider on the back is a more kind of simplified, stylized version of the one Tom Holland's got, and it is... Nearly the same design, it's only slightly different on the chest. And the eyes are big and wide and expressive. Overall though, if you're looking for just a fun Spidey Marvel Legends action figure, this is a fun Spidey Marvel Legends action figure. You just might want to obviously paint over all the blood. He comes with a few accessories, including his web hands which are on the figure currently, and bald fists which are separate hands, each with, of course, the old bent wrist articulation. Uh, the fists, as you can see, like the rest of the red on the costume, like all the bloody MCU Spideys, um, doesn't really have much paint in the webbing. In fact, I've got none in the webbing. So again, custom figure builders might want to get in there with really thin paints or really thin um, sharpies or something like that to define the webbing on the costume. He comes with a Peter Parker head, which is based on the likeness of Tom Holland, but as it is in that story, and maybe it's just the way the animators made it work, he sort of looks a little older. I think it's just the way the hair's worn, really. Uh, in fact, do you know what? This looks more like Tom Holland than the face in the episode and that's on the packaging as seen there on the right. Like, he looks older in that, whereas that, this looks a little bit more like him in hand. It's a bit of a shame because Nebula, um, T'Challa, and uh, uh, Captain Carter noticeably have an expression on their face, whereas this is a bit more neutral. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. Uh, could this work as an alternate head to your comic book, Spideys? I don't know. I'll have to try it sometime. Because I don't have a Peter Parker head for any of my Spideys apart from my Ultimate Spider-Man. So it'd be cool to, to try this out at some point. But that time is not today. Uh, he also comes with Doctor Strange's Cape of Levitation, which, if you remember correctly in the story, uh, joins forces with the heroes that survived the zombie apocalypse and stays with Peter for the majority of the story, except when it floats around um, uh, carrying the head in a jar of Scott Lang which I'm sure is the only reason this was in the story, really, was so they could have that. And it's a shame that this didn't come with a Scott Lang's head in a jar accessory. I think that would have been Chef's Kiss, the absolute icing on the cake, perfect addition. Um, but, you know, still nice. It's a really fun cartoony take on a, on, a, on a prop that we've seen on several Doctor Strange figures over the years, including not out here in the UK yet, but he, he's... I've got a deposit on him, and I will be doing a review of him. The No Way Home version of Doctor Strange. Uh, the golden red decal is nice. The texture look on the inside of the collar and everything is lovely. Um, and, of course, it just sits nice and comfortably on Spidey's shoulders to create Spidey Hunter. Spidey Hunter? <laughs> Zombie Hunter Spidey. He also comes with part of the Watcher Builder figure, which is this rather <whistles> sexy right leg. You all right there, Watcher? Watch out. Oi, oi, oi. So I'll add that to the pile of severed watcher parts, shall I? Um, this leg and the naked left arm have made me realise that it's not exactly it, an accurate watcher to the watcher we end up seeing in the show. But also it's made me wonder why we didn't get him in his semi-armoured look from the finale. Maybe it's a spoiler thing. Let's take a look at Zombie Hunter Spidey in action. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, kicking zombie-ass Spider-Man. Look at him go, standing there. He can't stand up well because of the cape. Look out. It's zombie Hunter Spider-Man. What do you think of the Zombie Hunter Spider-Man figure? I think it's fine. It's not a standout in the wave. Uh, it's just neat. Um, and, you know, Spider-Man's my favourite character. Favourite comic character, favourite soap opera. I've been reading it since I was a kid. I, you know, I adore him. 
I'm always open to any interpretation because I'm like, yeah, let's see what you got. This one's fine. It's okay. It does its job. I guess it's all right. But what do you think? Do you like the zombie hunter spider figure? Do you think he'll look better on the shelf in Post next to Captain America or beating the piss out of him? Let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to pick up a figure for me from my Amazon wish list, the link is in the description. You can get a shout out and, of course, all my love and adoration. You don't have to do that, of course. No obligation. You could just leave a comment or like or share this video, favorite it, subscribe to the channel. Every little bit of support helps. Um, this cape is an appropriate accessory for us to end on, of course, because the next figure we're going to take a look at is Doctor Strange Supreme.